Hello and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass and today I want to talk about building a guitar from scratch. I'm talking about you get some wood and you literally make a guitar out of nothing but raw materials. This guitar that I'm holding right here I affectionately call Flounder. I modeled this guitar after you know the old Yamaha SG series from the uh, 70s and early 80s because they're just simply unattainable now as far as their costs. So, and I'd always wanted one of those kind of guitars, so I decided to make my own version of one, which is this. And this is a guitar that is completely built by me using basic tools. Uh, we'll be going over some of the specialty tools that you would need to do a build like this as I kind of go through. Now, I will apologize up front, I am still a little congested. And I'll also apologize, this is probably going to be a pretty long video because uh, I'll be rambling along and probably forgetting various little steps in the build process. Um, I uh, Like I said, if you're going to build a guitar out of raw materials from scratch, uh, your starting point is an idea. So like I said, I used pictures of the old Yamaha SG you know, series uh, guitars as kind of my template. And I began the whole build process with the bridge here. This bridge is a single piece of ebony that I cut out in like a C shape, as you see, as you see, and uh, used an old scrap piece of brass that I had as the plate. Then I just drilled holes, and then I put in my uh, saddles. And this is the beginning of the measuring process for the guitar right here. It all started with this bridge. It's like, okay, well, I know my string spacing now. Uh, I was very specific about what kind of saddles I wanted to use. I wanted to use brass. I wanted this style. And so I established that first. The second step, the basic wood for the guitar. Um, I, in a previous build, uh, I did a, a bolt-on neck. And for this guitar, I wanted to try to attempt to build a neck through body, which is exactly what I ended up doing. So from here to here, that is a solid piece of hard rock maple that I reclaimed from an old piece of furniture from my wife's side of the family. This wood I estimate to be at least 100 years old. Um, it was uh, all in odd shapes and sizes. Uh, it had been part of a bed. So what I did was I found the longest piece I could find, which was literally from here to here. That was the longest continuous piece of solid wood that I had to work with for this particular project. So, as you can see, what I did was, is I measured, and I'm like, okay, that's the dimension of the guitar. That's how long it can be. And that, of course, had to inform how what kind of scale length I could have. And this has a very short scale length. This is a 24.75. So it is a short scale guitar uh, relative to, uh, I mean, it's more of a Gibson scale guitar. And uh, like I said, I was using the limitations, the materials at hand just to conceptualize the instrument and to begin just the basic building process. So using this piece of wood, that runs the, <clears throat> runs the length, runs through the center here, and this bridge measurement, I started to figure out what the fingerboard was gonna look like. That was the next step, conceptualizing, okay, I wanted to use a piece of ebony, which fortunately I did have some old stock ebony in hand uh, here in the shop. So I got this piece of ebony, I determined what scale length I could get away with. Then that's one reason why the guitar, I call it flounder, is because it's kind of short and stubby. And that's just because that's the amount of wood I had to work with. So anyway, I get my fingerboard material, which is ebony. And then I have to, you know, I figured out the scale. So the hardest part, or the part that I think a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their head around when they think even think about building something like this is like well, well how do you how do you figure out the fret slots 
you know, I'm not going to go into detail about fretting a guitar in this video. I will be doing uh, hopefully a whole series on like how to build a neck from scratch. I want to, I definitely want to get involved in that part of the process, i.e. fretting and finishing frets. We're not going to do that here because of time, but we will talk about how do you come up with, you know, where to put the frets. So let's set the guitar down for a sec. And this is where when you get into some serious DIY stuff, you got to buy some tools. This is a fret saw, Stumac. This is a fretting miter box. So what happens is, is that you have your neck material lying in here. Then you go through with your saw and you saw your uh, fret slots. But how do you know where to put the slots? Well, you have templates. This template right here, I've got, this is a, this is a 24.9 Martin template. So anyway, you notice all the tape and crap on it. Double-sided tape, you tape your fingerboard material to this, and then you feed it through. And if you see all these little notches, as you go through, there's a little, there's a little uh, pin in here. And you go from notch to notch to notch, and that will put your fret slots where they need to be in order to make the fingerboard. The fretboard, I should say. Uh, so, just wanted to show some basic tools and kind of do a real, you know, quick explanation of how you end up with your frets where they're supposed to be. So, you got, I had my centerpiece, I had my fretboard figured out, I had a nut already picked out, I decided to use a brass nut to kind of go with the brass saddles, and this is an adjustable nut. A lot of people are probably going, boo, these are no good, they got the little screws and you can adjust it up and down. The thing is, is that I wanted to have just ultimate adjustability on this guitar. I wanted it to be an easy guitar to set up, an easy guitar when atmospheric changes happen, to uh, be able to alter that nut a little bit at the time. And it's been great because uh, it sounds fine. It sounds great, just like any other nut. Uh, and I like the adjustability on it. Would I put this on every guitar I own? No, I don't think it's necessary for this particular guitar since this is a hand, this is a hand built, more boutique-y kind of thing. I just wanted to try one of these out and I've really enjoyed having it. It's been great. Uh, so, knowing this dimension at the nut, knowing the dimension down here at my, uh, at my bridge with my saddles and where the strings are going to go, I determined, okay, I, I, cut my, I cut my slots, then I shaped the finger or the fretboard. I shaped it to match the nut and to break here to go on to keep my strings properly spaced and on the neck properly from the bridge. So you have those two parts done. Then it's like, okay, headstock. This is a solid piece of hard rock maple. I could have cut it, reversed it, glued it. That would be conventional wisdom. I kind of wanted to do it in a different way. So I hand carved that angle. That there is no cut in this wood. There is no joint. And I left a fairly robust, you know, uh, I left a fairly robust piece of uh, material there so that it's good on the thumb and it gives the headstock the stability it needs without having to cut and glue. Because cutting and gluing does immediately add strength to a headstock. I just wanted to make sure to leave enough material so that this would be stable no matter what. And being that it's hard rock maple that's been aged for over a hundred years, I didn't have too many concerns about wood stability over the long term. So I got my angle, my break angle. It's pretty mild. Um, it's not, it's not a huge break angle. It's probably like seven or eight degrees, but it's enough and it's uh, worked beautifully over time. My headstock shape, I decided I kind of, you know, I've got the little you know, SG kind of thing going on here. And for the headstock, I just went simple and just did a little indent there to kind of mirror the horns a little bit. 
So, the wings. The wings of the guitar are made of the same hard rock maple. I quite simply sandwiched it all together, glued the wings on, and had my basic shape with a neck and with a fingerboard on it. As you see from the back, you can kind of see how the, I kept the, the, the heel. It's pretty cool. It's rounded. It is robust, but I can totally play to every single fret on this. I have full accessibility. And I just, you know, kind of came up with this design on my own. And that's part of the beauty of building your own guitar from scratch, is that you can just do little design things like this. I've never seen a heel exactly like this. I've, and uh, it's just how I decided to do it. And it turned out really cool. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, so I got my wings on, I had my neck sorted, um, and I went ahead at that point and began the lamination process, which is, this is Honduran mahogany top, Honduran mahogany on the back, and a Honduran mahogany inlay into the back of the neck. This was because I felt that the neck had gotten a little bit thin as I was shaping it. Of course, when you're shaping a neck profile, you're using files. You're going down, and I just felt like, oh, man, I think I took just a hair too much material off. So what I decided to do is I went ahead and dead flattened this. Then I inlaid the Honduran and uh, reshaped the neck. and ended up, I only added like maybe a millimeter or two of material back. And it turned out looking really cool. Like, I, I, I really dig how that turned out. So, when you're shaping the body, you're shaping the neck, you're using files, you're using lots of sandpaper. The uh, hours involved with the shaping and the sanding is pretty huge. I mean, I'm not going to lie to anybody in this video and say that you can just like bash out a cool guitar out of raw materials in a matter of a couple weeks. This particular guitar took me about three months to make. Um, and that's working at a pretty good pace of an average of about, you know, anywhere from two to four hours a day, uh, depending on the day, depending on the week. So I got my wings together and then I started the laminate process on the, on the, uh, on the top and the back because the guitar was not nearly thick enough with this hard rock maple. It is a relatively thin piece of wood. So to, uh, to compensate for the fact that, you know, I had to have room for electronics and stuff in here, I, uh, I just went ahead and laminated and then I cut, literally routed right through the hard rock maple completely before I laminated. I routed the, the, the control cavity and I routed the pickup uh, where the pickups were going to go uh, prior to the laminate process. So this is actually hollow. This entire, this cavity is, is hollow all the way through the hard rock maple with just the uh, veneer on the front and the back. And then obviously I cut some little brass, uh, I cut a brass control plate and a little brass plate here for the strings. So the string ball ends had something to, uh, something to hit. And uh, I just, you know, rough cut those out of brass and just kind of left it rustic. And I like the look of that. I'm very pleased with it. So... Then I decided, oh, I want to cap the headstock too. So that this is ebony. So I capped the headstock because I knew I was planning on binding it. And I ended up, as you can tell, binding the whole guitar. The binding does terminate right here. I didn't bind the I didn't bind the fingerboard because I just wanted that ebony to be there. Uh, but the headstock is fully bound, starting in there all the way around using you know using a router once again and the proper bits you have to buy the right bits to do binding work and that could be a whole video on its own which it probably will be at some point uh going forward so you know now we're getting down to just like the nitty and the gritty of you know the body is shaped the body is laminated got that laminate in there so i fully you know sand finish the guitar finish sand the guitar get the binding on clean up all the binding work, and then I just clear coated it with polyurethane using a brush. Um, I did not spray it. I did this, you know, very rustic 
and very much handwork. Uh, I used as few tools as possible that were power tools on this guitar. This guitar is, with the exception of, with the exception of the table saw that I used to kind of like rough cut in the basic neck shape, and uh, and also I used the power sand, you know, like a floor sander to get my uh, fingerboard together and just to save a little bit of time but other than that i used a router obviously to route for the truss rod which is just running underneath this ebony neck it is a it is a full channel truss rod uh very robust as well so let's get into some of the details of like okay so i've, I've got the body all kind of figured out it's all finished you know what are we going to do for hardware and stuff so i put grovers on it for machine heads, obviously I built the bridge from scratch. These are Gota pickups, which, by the way, I want to take a minute here. You know, there's all this crazy stuff with like thousand dollar sets of Gibson PAFs and all this crap. Sorry if I offend anybody by saying that, but I mean that's just nuts. I mean I could buy three decent guitars for a thousand bucks and fix them up and make them into great players. But anyway, these Gota pickups. Are not terribly expensive they're sub 100 uh, a piece uh, these are fully coil splittable uh, so I have them running in series parallel and single and uh, they sound amazing and we'll be listening to the guitar here in a few minutes anyway they're they're great pickups so I went with these pickups I went with the zebra because I wanted that 70s vibe I went with the poker chip on my three-way switch because I wanted that 70s vibe and uh, yeah I just went with amber knobs just little you know LP knobs on it uh, these mini switches as I alluded to just a moment ago let me turn that volume back down uh, this is uh, you know going from series to single to parallel and this goes from series to single to kill switch reason why that's a kill switch setting is because when you're in the middle position and you pull up on this knob on the volume knob you are in uh it's a it's a phase it's a phase switch so it puts the pickups out of phase so you get that nice thin tone if you're going for that uh so anyway that rendered the third position on the uh bridge pickup into a just dead dead position which is fine because i like using that as a little kill switch so anyway but and i've still got my single coil and i've still got my series this is a mud switch, which, you know, anybody who's watched any of my videos on custom wiring that I've done so far, I use mud switches a lot just because it just cut, dumps your treble. And if you're using a, you know, fuzz pedal or if, you know, whatever, a really good, uh, really extreme overdrive, it's sometimes fun just to dump all those high frequencies. And so anyway, we're going to leave it all up in humbucker mode and uh, not mess with the mud switch for uh, some of the playing demonstration. Uh, output jack, just standard, didn't have the little brass plate there. And yeah, you know, it's daunting. You think, oh, could I build a guitar from scratch? I mean, is that even possible? It is very possible, and it is not that difficult. And your, your ramp up to it, you know, another tool that you'll definitely need are, you know, perfect straight edge tools like this, you know, to make sure that your, your, uh, everything's lining up the way that it's supposed to. And you can't, you can't skimp on that just like you can't skimp on fretting tools, you know, like having a proper fret rocker. You need to have radius blocks to be able to radius your fingerboard. You know, this is a very flat fingerboard. I did like a 16 radius on this. But I needed to have the proper sanding blocks to sand down the uh, fretboard, and then I needed the same to be able to, you know, do the fret work. So there's about, you know, $200 in specialty tools, along with just having all the basic tools that you would, uh, you would have for woodworking laying around, like reamers for your, you know, to make your, uh, to make your uh, machine head holes and all that kind of stuff. Well, anyway. I've kind of gone over the uh, the mechanics here of what the guitar does. Like I said, this is just very much uh, a Yamaha SG clone from the 70s kind of thing. And it's got, you know, all those... <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so that was the neck pickup. Very beefy, very, uh, very thick. Uh, no question that that thing has, and, and maybe I'll go back to that real quick, and then when you're, you know, doing single note stuff, it's really cool. <laughs> sounding and then you go down to the uh, bridge pickup and you've got you know you know really nice crunch on that and then you go into your single coil mode get into your more like you know cleaner chimier stuff uh, we go back up to the bridge and uh, we go into the into single coil, coil mode and you know it opens it up gives it a nice bit of clarity Let's go to that middle position, which I alluded to earlier, and uh, and then that's out of phase. Also, I have a bright switch on the uh, tone control, so I can roll my tone all the way off. So let's go down to the bridge pickup, tone all the way down. And then you pull on it. And that's just a cool little trick and gizmo to have involved with the guitar as well. So anyway, Flounder. This was my second from scratch build. Um, it's totally doable. Like I said, some of the necessary tools, you, I mean, you have to have a fret saw. You have to have the miter box and you have to have the templates that will give you your scale length. Other than that, you know, you've got your bridge and your nut. That will dictate your fingerboard or your fretboard. I don't know why I always say fingerboard. It's like I'm, I'm thinking of violins or something. Your fretboard will always is, is easy to line up and figure out the dimensions of once you have your nut and you have your bridge and your scale length figured out boom it's just cutting those slots and you cut the slots and you put the frets in once you're there and you have the fretboard and you have where the nut will be which is at the end of the fretboard and you have your bridge position you can make any kind of guitar you want it really is down to those components I mean, you could do whatever kind of headstock you want. You can use any machine heads you want. Your electronics are all up to you. Just getting those basic mechanical things down so the thing will intonate and the thing will play in tune. You have that down and you take your time with that part and the rest of it is just aesthetics. It is super, super fun. And I highly, highly, if, if, if you're a DIYer, who's been around the block a few times, or you've done a lot of guitar mods, or maybe you've built certain parts of instruments, do yourself a favor, make it part of your bucket list, and just get some wood, find some wood. Like, like this wood fell in my lap. I was like, this is hard rock maple. I, and if this wood hadn't come, al come along into my world, I may not have ever built this guitar. I probably wouldn't have. But just seeing the wood or being inspired by, you know, uh, reclaiming materials was enough to be like, you know, I, I got to make a guitar out of this. And I just did it. And I encourage others to do the same. Like I said, you get your mechanicals down and the rest of it's just, just fun. Pure fun. All right. Subscriptions have been going up. Comments have been going up. Need to keep it going. We have, uh, you know, I have plans, you know, for the future. I'm going to keep growing the channel for now.
And uh, I look forward to bringing you more content next time. And I really, truly appreciate everybody who watches, everybody who likes, everybody who subscribes. And for all of you who are, you know, now regulars, please share this with others. I would really appreciate it. All right. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.